bar Pat Guyton to come in her own way. Master, Savior, Jesus, there's something about that name. I heard 
physical affliction. My knee hurt. My back hurt. I don't want to get up. My legs hurt. I can't do that. I heard uh, even mental. When you're, when you're battling your mind, my brother, if I should come here or not, that's a mental affliction going on. When you're thinking about, oh, my wife is here and I'm here. I don't have my husband. My children are acting up. Those are mental afflictions. And I said, Lord, I know that God is able to deliver us, not from some of them, but he promised to deliver us from them all. And you know what? There's a reason why we go through afflictions. We go through afflictions so that we can have purpose to our life so that we can share with others that I too were afflicted and God delivered me. If God delivered me, he has no respect of person. He gonna re he's going to deliver you as well. Also, uh, we have to have a testimony. And sometimes our afflictions bring about testimonies. We're able to tell somebody else, you can hold on, you can go through. And sometimes it's just a test of faith. It's just a test of faith. It's only a test. To see if you're going to believe that God said and God will do what he said he would do. And he said he would deliver you from them all. It's just a test. I thank you, praise the Lord, because he told us not to forget his benefits. When you're going through these things, when you're going through being hospitalized, whether it's one day or a hundred days, when you're at home without your wife, hallelujah, when you're at home without your husband, when you're moaning and groaning his death, God said he has not forgotten you. He knows that it's an affliction. He promised to deliver you from them all. He said, but forget not my benefits. Forget not my benefits. His benefits are, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all of thine iniquities. Yes, he has forgiven our sins. Every sin we've asked God to forgive us for, he's cast those sins into the sea of forgiveness. He said, who healeth all of thy diseases. You don't have a disease that God cannot heal. Hallelujah. You don't have a disease that God cannot heal. He said, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Come on now. Some of you are headed straight for destruction. My brother, that was headed, but God snatched him from the pits of hell and said, it will not be so. Hallelujah. He said, who, who, who crowded thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Come on now. I've been waiting for the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Where would we be? Hallelujah. He said, who satisfied thy mouth with good things. Hallelujah. So that thy youth is renewed like an eagle's. He said, the Lord, ex the Lord excuse righteousness and judgment for all those who are oppressed. Baby, if you're afflicted, you're oppressed as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? He said, there's a promise for deliverance because I promise you I will deliver them, you from them all. But listen to this. He said sometimes you're going to be delivered just through my word. Just because my word said so, you will be. He said sometimes it's because of your faith. <laughs> hallelujah. Because of your faith. Hallelujah. Not because of who you are, but because of your faith, I'm going to make you whole. Hallelujah. He said sometimes I have educated, I have allowed men to be educated. And so therefore they can diagnose and prognose your, your particular problem and he can prescribe medication. That's a temporary healing, but that's going to be all right. And then he said sometimes, hallelujah, he will bring about a divine healing. Hallelujah. It's called a miracle. You know that nobody can work that out but God. Hallelujah. That is divine healing. And they said sometimes, hallelujah, I have to take you through death. But that's all right too. Because do you know, hallelujah, it says for to me to live is Christ. Hallelujah. For me to live is Christ. But for me to die, hallelujah, that's gain. Hallelujah. I remember the greatest affliction that I've been through, hallelujah, was losing my dad. Hallelujah. I lost my dad on August 25th. A good man. Hallelujah. My dad was a good man. And I thank God for my dad. I thank God for every day of my life that I spent with my dad. But I'll tell you something. I was asking God. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I was depending on you. Hallelujah. I had expected you. Hallelujah. To heal my dad. Hallelujah. I was expecting a divine healing. Hallelujah. You healed him once. Hallelujah. He had, he had, um, um, what did my, my dad had uh, a stroke. We prayed and we asked God to restore his body. Hallelujah. 
if my dad walked in here today, hallelujah, if you had seen my dad before he died, you would have not known that he had experienced a stroke because God had restored him. So you know how we do. If you've done it one time, hallelujah, you can do it again, hallelujah. But my dad was diagnosed, he had lung cancer. The lung cancer began to spread throughout his body and it affected his leg and his back and his liver. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I remember being at the doctor with my dad, and my dad asked, he was always concerned about his breathing. He said, doctor, let me ask you something. If I stop breathing, what's going to happen? She said, we're going to lose you. I got up from there, and I began to pray. I said, I'm not ready to lose my daddy. I'm not ready to lose my daddy. But I'm going to tell you something. God brought a spirit over me, the anointing over me. I was walking the halls of that hospital, praising my God and speaking in tongues. But God was telling to me, it's going to be all right. Because you know what? I'm going to take him home. He don't have to worry about chemotherapy no more. He don't have to worry about getting shot or injected with anything anymore. He don't have to worry about anything anymore. You know I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you love me so. Hallelujah. You love my dad so. Hallelujah. That you called him to rest. You called him to sleep in you. Amen. For me to live is Christ. Hallelujah. But for me to die is gain. Gain. So that means that God did say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he promised to deliver us from them all. So sometimes that means death. Death is a good thing. Death is a good thing. Think about it. No more bills. No more kids running in and out of your house. No more folks calling you about junk. No more saints looking at you like that you're crazy. No more this and that and the other. Come on now. That's got to be a good thing. The Bible said it's gain. And all I know, that, that that may not be a good thing sometimes when you gain weight, but when you're sick and you gain the weight, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So to me, for me to live is Christ. Hallelujah. And to die is gain. I say to you in closing, if you think you have an affliction, because some of you all have lived a long time, and we thank God for it. We thank God for the wisdom that he endowed you with. We thank God for this beautiful fellowship. We thank God for the people that you are among. Remember, you, through the help of God, can handle any affliction that is called upon your body, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, or whether it be both. Remember that there is always an answer there's always deliverance in your affliction. We know not how you're going to be delivered, but one thing we do know is that you're going to be delivered. Pray my strength in the Lord, and I do thank you all again so very much for inviting me here. I've been here a long time, and I just thank God for you all so very much. Remember your afflictions are not forgotten. Pray my strength in the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Those great words of inspiration for all of us. We appreciate that. I think we're about to wind this up. And uh, we're going to call back on Deacon Guyton to come in and put the final closing remarks. Thank you.